Welcome to another episode of Mama Bear Apologetics. I'm Hillary. And I'm Amy. Yep. And so today on Mama Bear Apologetics, we are going to be talking more from our previous podcast about how to foster joy in 2021, because 2020... (laughs) <laughs> it's <been> amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, it's kind of going to be a verb now. Be like, you know, right? oh, I just 2020 that one or something. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be great. Uh, well, honestly, I think the best part of 2020 though has been the Match.com commercials. Yes. Because did you see the newest one? It's no, just is there awesome. another one? There's another one. Yeah, to okay. where they're. Oh gosh, what were they talking about there? Yeah, it was just 2020 when they were talking about all these things that they like. It's it's so funny. Like I I love them. So those the are the original one. One good thing has it's got like the year 2020 meeting up with satan and they decide yeah. oh this is a match and it shows them like throwing toilet paper and going yeah. to movie theaters by themselves so it's actually pretty props to match.com for really jumping on that so clever moment. yeah yeah so, but also you know we 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 need to have a segment in here amy's got a confession <laughs> true life confession from the previous <gasps> podcast so amy would you like to confess to everybody how you oh, do confession <laughs> yeah no okay so <laughs> I've been I've been so frustrated with eight year old me like come on eight year old me get your act together okay so in the last podcast I quoted uh, a quote that I had thought was from Abraham Lincoln and it's if you look for the bad in mankind you'll surely find it now this came from a movie that I absolutely adored as a child Pollyanna I broke dating myself the VHS tape of this movie because I loved it so much and that quote always stuck with me ever since I was a kid and I assumed why would Disney lie about something Abraham Lincoln said? Well, you know what? You just can't trust Disney for your presidential facts, okay, or quotes. So that was actually not said by Abraham Lincoln. It was something uh, that was just put in by the writers. And uh, from what we were told by one of the viewers who were like, oh, wait a second. Actually, this was something that the writers did. I guess they even made lockets that they sold at Disney. Yeah, Disney thought it was real. And he made like thousands of them, I think, like thousands of lockets. um, Yeah, and they had to recall the law. (laughs) Recall the lies <laughs> until the writer's like no he didn't actually say that it was like <laughs> why would I, that's just dumb to put in a fake quote by a real person that's just yeah you know what and so yes i did not fact check that quote someone uh contact us and said hey he actually didn't say this i so appreciate that because i mean that's why we're here right we're here to build each other up the sentiment still rings true because yes. it is it's that glass half full glass half empty perspective right if you're looking for bad things you're gonna find them if you're looking for good things you're gonna find them so the sentiment is true abraham lincoln may have thought it we don't know but no he didn't say that thank you again to our wonderful viewer who who uh pointed that out um that was a wonderfully humbling moment to be like dang it okay let me come back and and uh share with folks so that they aren't passing this wonderful gem down to their children thinking that it was abe lincoln and it was not yep it was not it was pollyanna Um, it was (laughs) pollyanna the writers of the movie pollyanna (laughs) wonderful so today we're going to be talking about just another aspect of joy, which is kind of an aspect that most people don't really think about in terms of joy, and that's joy and suffering. So yeah. this is the joy that nobody else, nobody wants to have, and no one's like, oh, I can't wait to learn joy and suffering. No, nobody. Yeah, no, it's like praying for patience. No, nobody wants to do that because then you're going to be given situations that are going to require that, and well, it's people, not fun. Yeah, people think uh, people think they want to have patience, but they don't want to develop patience. Mm. Uh, and so they think asking for it means that they won't have to develop it. And that, that, that just doesn't work like that. Nope. <laughs> so, but first we want to dispel a major myth about suffering. And this is something that I've heard many, many times. And there's even some theologies, the, uh, particularly the, the health and wealth theology mm. that say yeah. that all suffering is a result of sin. Mm. And th- I, I can't even tell you how disrespectful this is to some people who are maybe going through something that, really is not a result of their sin. Like uh, if you're, if you're going to take every cancer patient or every, you know, whatever job and say loss, this is, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Job loss. Um, yeah. Death of a spouse, death of a child, anything that you have in there. Um, yeah. And saying this is a result of your sin. That's just, no. Um, we'll get to it later that sometimes it's a result of sin, yeah. but to automatically jump there, we just want to dispel that myth. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk, number one, about the purpose of suffering, that yes, suffering actually does have a purpose. Mm. Um, secondly, we're going to talk to why it's important for us to have joy in suffering, because this is not something that's like a, just a suggestion in the Bible. This is something that 
it's pretty clear, give thanks in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, And then three, we're going to talk about how to do it because it's great to have this like, you know, theoretical, yeah, I should have joy and suffering. Okay, how exactly does one go about cultivating that? So those will be our our three things that we talk about. Um, So first off, sorry, scrolling through the notes here. Um, So the purpose of suffering, one of the probably the most obvious one is Amy. (laughs) Yeah, it, it develops perseverance. I mean, it's that iron sharpening iron. You cannot get stronger if you uh, have anyone who's trying to bulk up on muscles or get better at running. You don't get that way from having the easy road. You have to work hard. You have to do things that are difficult, challenging, that make you sore. It yep. develops perseverance. It develops maturity. People don't think of character like a muscle sometimes. And this is one of those yeah. things that drives me nuts. Whenever I see those movies where it's like the girl goes after the bad boy and just all it takes is him to meet the right girl and suddenly the bad boy becomes this like responsible and you know he's always turning (laughs) down temptation yeah that's that's basically like saying you know what i think i'm gonna wake up tomorrow and run a marathon when i can't even run a mile like Mm. this is an actual muscle that needs to be exercised and thinking that it just comes overnight it doesn't so some of the verses for this are romans 5 3 through 5 And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance, proven character and proven character, hope and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So this Mm -hmm. kind of just talks about how, you know, this is the kind of chain of what happens. You got the suffering, then you have the perseverance, and then you have character, because like we said, character is a muscle, and then you have hope. And that's, and really, once you've developed the character, and I think the the other points we're going to talk about in here are going to be like, these are the bullet points of developing that character, where then you have hope, and that's where you can start having that joy within suffering. Um, But some examples of this, Amy and I were talking before the podcast about basically all the different covenants that were made throughout scripture. So the very first one would be though. I got to say this, right. John always says this, the noetic covenant. Is that the right way to say it? Is it noetic? I've, I've always thought it was noetic. Is it not noetic. like it? It's noetic, one of noetic. those two noetic or noetic yeah. uh, covenants. I, I feel <laughs> like, like noetic is a, is a different, it's like a type of Psalm, but I could be wrong. Okay. Anyway, the covenant with Noah, how's that? Mm-hmm. Um, the covenant with uh, Abraham and then the covenant with mm-hmm. David and then the covenant with the church and each one of these ones. So Noah, you know, he had the covenant with God and that's still, it's like, we don't think about how long it took for him to build that ark. It was something like, wasn't it like yeah. 600 years or something? Yeah, very long time to work. I can't remember if he was 600 or if it took 600 years. Um, I do know that in my notes in my Bible that I have Noah as the original failure to launch because he was something like several hundred years old before he had his first kid. But um, (laughs) I've never never thought about that. (laughs) I have it in my Bible, failure to launch. Um, So, yeah, we've got Noah that God gives him this promise, but it takes a long time and a lot of hard work before he ever sees that come to fruition. Uh, Mm -hmm. The same thing with Abraham. And in fact, there's this uh, book I was reading for Biola when we were doing uh, church history or what? No, uh, maybe a survey of the Old Testament where it talks about God giving Abraham the promise and then the amount of time that takes place. I mean, decades before Mm -hmm. he actually has a son. And it was like the kind of promise that God was giving to Abraham, he needed to make sure that Abraham's shoulders were basically strong enough to carry the promise. Because whenever God gives us a promise, it usually has a lot of benefits, but there's a lot of responsibility that come with those benefits that you have to be able to shoulder that burden before you can really fully accept that full promise. So he had to make Abraham into a man that was worth having an eternal covenant for all your, you know, generation upon generations, all nations will be blessed by you. Um, yeah. the, the, the Davidic covenant, David was, a, you know, anointed as king. And for him, again, it was decades before he actually became king. And in that time, like he had Saul chasing him all over the place, trying to kill him. Yeah. Uh, and you think about the kind of character that he developed. Saul was anointed king and immediately became king. And you put a little pressure on him and homeboy cracked. I mean, totally cracked. I mean, he was like <laughs> throwing spears at anybody who didn't like what he was doing. 
David had to develop that character in order to become yeah. the man after God's own heart. Uh, and then finally, within the church era, the Lord has said, I'm coming back soon. And we're like, that was 2000 years ago that the church yeah. has been having to cultivate that character as well. So anytime you see the Lord wanting to give big promises, he it's usually coupled by a long period of time that's usually not that fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, it's like that muscle. It has to be developed maturity, especially when we think of our kids, right? Our kids don't come out being this mature little individual who knows how to, how to balance all their finances and everything. No, they are crazy for a really long time. And we have to keep working with them and keep shepherding them and keep guiding them and giving them opportunities to be able to develop this. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. part of it. And they're going to fall. They're going to, they're going to struggle with things, but I mean, that's, that's part of this development. And that's what I love about James one, two through four is we're even exalted to say, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Again, we see this perseverance, mm -hmm. letting perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. It's part of that necessary refining process. Yep. Part of that maturity. Everyone wants to be mature, but no one wants to go through the maturation process. So, no. um, so yeah, so joy within suffering is, is uh, developing perseverance. That's a purpose. And number two is sometimes it's bringing about a good that we can't see right now. And this is, we're going to talk it later about this, why it's so important to look back. Um, so we just listed a couple of stories that we could think of where something seemed really awful happened that, you know, looking back, it was good. So the obvious one would be, of course, Joseph. Um, yeah. Was that yeah joseph sold into slavery by his brothers mm -hmm. and then later becomes basically prince over the whole area mm -hmm. um you think of ruth the kind of suffering she went through that um you know losing her husband losing her uh her brother-in-law like all all the women i mean i'm sorry all the all the men in that family just gone and you know yeah. then journeying to a place that wasn't her home and then working in the fields i mean none of this is really that great but then she becomes in the lineage of jesus mm -hmm. uh through that process yeah. um well, and even yeah. Esther and Esther popped into my head too. Oh, yeah, you know, maybe for one. this reason, you know, this is why you've been brought here. And she yeah. was, why am I here? Why am I in this position? And it was just to give her the opportunity to be able to save her people. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's one of those great things that sometimes suffering it, it, we may not see it in our lifetime. It could be generations, but you know, it's always a bonus when you actually do see some of the benefits a few years down the way and say, oh, wow, mm -hmm. you know, this, this part really sucked in my life, but it brought about this huge blessing or this yeah. ministry opportunity or or it helped shape my character or, or shave off some of these awful parts that I really needed to give up to God. It's, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so that would be perseverance, bringing about goods that we can't see. And then um, this one that, you know, we, we, we kind of just negated this at the beginning, but natural consequences. Sometimes we do experience natural consequences from uh, our own actions. And I, I just yeah. want to point out a couple of ones right now that I think that we're seeing that we may not sometimes really relate that, hey, maybe some of my suffering is coming from this. And that is just uh, number one, the amount of time that we spend on screens. Yeah. And, this and I would say that even ties into podcasts and things, because just within mm -hmm. our own family, you know, we, we've got podcasts and things that we enjoy listening to on drives, but sometimes they can be so wrapped up in, you know, current events and that sort of thing that it's, it's very negative. You're only seeing the bad or saying, okay, well, yeah. there, here's how this destruction is coming about to where you can feel very discouraged at the end of mm -hmm. it. So, so you do, you have to be very careful about not only what you're seeing, but also what you're putting in your body, whether that's uh, audio as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just different things about, you know, the, these would be the simple things, you know, the screen times or what we're eating. It's like some diseases come no matter what. But you know what? Some diseases come because we have not been feeding our body good food or we've yeah. not been, uh, you know, drinking enough water or th there's just natural consequences that like ways that God created us to be, to be in fellowship yeah. with people, to be uh, cultivating our bodies, all these different things. I mean, even taking care of the planet, there's all these different things that, that sometimes it's results of, it's just natural consequences and the fact of, you know, living in a fallen world. Yeah. Um, 
I feel like I thought we had one more point after that. Well, Maybe and it's that was important. just the one. Yeah. And it's important too, to remember that, that, um, you know, joy and suffering, when we think of suffering there, it's important because it, it's a bit like pain. It can actually even heighten us to where there's a problem. So yes. I mean, when we think of anxiety, depression, okay, there, there's a problem there. When we have pain, there's a problem. Um, I forget the name of the disease. Do you know the disease where people can't feel pain? It was like on an episode of house. I remember I thought it was super neat to where oh. like you could smash a person's hand with a hammer and they'd be like, okay, cool. What, you know, they don't feel pain at all and it's actually a bad thing yeah because I know they that have that's to- one of the things in leprosy where it's it's that bacteria actually affects the nerves to where they can't oh feel interesting things. i didn't i didn't know that yeah um and so someone corrected me at first i was thinking it was just a nerve thing but it no it's still a bacteria but it affects the nerves to where they can't feel anything you know that whole not feeling pain thing is uh <laughs> there was an episode that john and i watched of this show on netflix where they were doing a a chili pepper eating contest. <gasps> I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. And, and that guy was just chomping out on crazy stuff. And he was just, his face was fine. It was like, he didn't yeah. feel a thing. And everybody else was like sweating and vomiting. And I was like, there's something yeah. not normal about that. Yeah. So, so I like that point of, you know, um, that, that, that when we say natural consequences, it could be something that's alerting us to something that we need to not be doing. I know for, for me personally, I, I start getting an increase in anxiety when I've been on social media too much. And so that's Mm -hmm. actually helping me instead of being like, why am I going through this anxiety? It's like, well, maybe there's something I need to cut out of my life. (laughs) That that was just a really helpful tool that the Lord, he's like, see, you're not functioning as well. So maybe you Mm -hmm. should see how you were intended to function. You're not supposed to be able to see every single wrong thing going on in the world from here to, you know, China. Hero. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. So, and then why is joy and suffering important? So, so as, as a mom, Amy, why would you say that being able to have, have joy and suffering, why is that important for us as Christians and as parents? One of the big things that we talked about is being able to recognize and, and have joy and suffering is an important part of communicating a healthy biblical worldview. We mm-hmm. do live in this fallen world. There is brokenness all around us. And if we act in a way that we always have these rose colored glasses or we perpetuate this idea that just because you're a Christian, everything's going to go well, which mm-hmm. is very common. Um, there was something my husband went through when he was a teen in the late 90s or mid 90s, late 90s. It was very popular to have protector God. You know, a lot of sermons were about protector God. As long as you're a Christian, as long as you can the faith, you're going to be okay. Everything's going to go fine. Your job's going to be okay. You're going to stay healthy. Mm. It's again, it's a bit like that prosperity gospel coming about again. (sighs) And unfortunately, when people started going through trials and troubles, they either fell away from the faith because they had put their faith in a false God and didn't realize it. um, Or, you know, they were completely um, broken by it. They're like, well, maybe I'm not good enough. I'm not a good enough Christian. Maybe I'm not a Christian. Yes. Yes. So we want to be careful that we we're communicating a proper and healthy biblical worldview. So, and again, on the flip side of that too, if we are always complaining about things that are going wrong in our life, we can actually unintentionally communicate that, Oh, we're not supposed to have these sufferings. Mm -hmm. So we want to be careful careful that our kids understand that, hey, the world has fallen, the world is broken. They are going to experience troubles and trials. Mom and dad can't be there to fix everything. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to help kids um, put their faith in God and help steer them into the sort of these healthy, um, healthy grieving, as well as dependence on the Lord rather than on other things. Because it's one thing if we don't help shepherd our kids to put their faith in God when they're going through trials or to seek him in these trials, to seek a community of believers to rest in the truth of scripture, then they're going to go other places to find that, that rest. Right. And it's usually not going to be healthy. It's going to be, oh, well, you need to indulge in something, maybe drink a little more, maybe sleep with somebody. You know, Mm -hmm. you got to do all these other worldly things to to feel better or to make something right. And then we want to make sure they're trying to numb something that they think isn't supposed to be there when the Christian worldview says you're exposed to experience the suffering. Um, That's one of the things that makes us long for heaven is the fact that like this is this world is not what we were intended for. Yeah. Um, so I would say another one with that is that, that why it's important for us to have the joy within suffering is it really reveals what brings us joy. And so mm-hmm. and I, I like what you wrote here. You might discover that you've been settling for comfort when you could have been having joy. Like the difference between comfort and joy is very different. That most suffering will not be comfortable and you will right. be very, very uncomfortable. 
Um, but you can have joy within that. It also shows you the difference between happiness and joy. That happiness is yeah. this fleeting thing that depends on circumstances. And joy is one of those things you can have with you always. It doesn't matter what's going on. Um, one of the most joyful things in the world is when you're walking according to God's calling in your life and doing what he's called you to do. Um, happiness, you know, but, what do you say? Yeah, it comes and goes. Happiness is fleeting. It's it's contingent upon external circumstances, whereas yeah. joy you can have. And even even in suffering, I think what what ends up happening is when you suffer, it strips away all those unnecessary things, mm, and you realize yeah. what's truly important, what's truly of value, um, was, and oh, what sorry. you truly need. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say I was talking to someone just today who we were talking about 2020, and I and I mentioned the statistic that we talked about on the last podcast. Oh, yeah, the Gallup how, survey. Yeah, the Gallup survey that showed that basically everybody across the countries or across the world, their mental health all you know kind of went kapooey, except for the one demographic of the people yeah. who were faithfully attending church. And I was talking to this girl, and uh, mm-hmm. she had had a lot of marriage problems in the past, mm-hmm. and she found that 2020 her marriage she's like that's the best year of marriage that we've had because it's exactly what you said it's stripped away all these other things where she realized oh the, yeah. the the quibbles that we had with each other weren't that important and they suddenly started valuing each other in a way that they hadn't been before and enjoying being home together enjoying having their son mm. there and um yeah but um e- even more than that i want to sh- this idea of um <laughs> excuse me uh finding out um, or the the idea that you can have joy when you are walking in the gifts that God has given you. So here's a story of something that I realized when I was in high school. And this is well, actually, no, I, was I out of high school? Yeah, this might have been right after I graduated from high school. So like during high school is when I started struggling with depression. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, the Lord has really, he has really healed me. I've, I've gone through a lot of healing in the last, you know, what, 25 years uh, since then that he has thankfully taken me for the most part out of that season, but I, I was in it for a very, very long time. Uh, and I, re- I was a camp counselor at this one place. It was, uh, I think every, for like all four years of college, I was a camp counselor at this camp. And I remember struggling so badly and sitting these girls down um, and telling them, hey, you know, I know that you've probably had camp counselors in the past who talked about things they went through and they weren't going through it. You know, it's so funny me thinking, you know, I'm like 18 years old of like, you know, oh, so you know, I should be past all this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I should know better by this age. I'm 18. Um, <laughs> but I was saying, you know, they might've said that they've gone through stuff in the past and God took them through, but I, I just have to tell you, I, I can't say that. I need to tell you what I'm going through right now. And I'm going mm. through, you know, this is how I'm feeling. And this is how you're going to see me react. Sometimes I might be crying for no reason. Um, just know that I'm still walking with the Lord. God is faithful in this, but this is what I'm going through right now. And I had this one girl who had been in my cabin, I think for several years, I'd had, I'd had the same group of girls for like, I think I had them all four years of high school. She had been one of those really, really pretty mean girls Mm. that was just gorgeous, but she was just so mean to other girls. And um, after I had this talk with them, um, she asked, she's like, can I come talk with you? And so we went back to my room and she just burst into tears. And she said, that's how I feel all the time. And this girl that had never opened up for me when I was a little Miss Happy Clappy camp counselor Mm -hmm. finally opened up to me. And I realized it's not that she was a mean girl. I think she was a miserable girl mm. and miserable sometimes means that you're mean to other people because you have so much pain that you don't know how to not have it come out on other people. Yeah. And I remember at that point, I th- even though I'd been struggling with the depression for several years, I thanked God for it. Yeah. And I and remember I- praying that prayer. Thank you, Lord, for my depression, because if I had to choose between not having the depression and not being able to connect with a girl like this or having the depression and being able to connect with, you know, girls like this, I would pick the depression every time. Man. I, and I've heard that so many times from people who have gone through trials and even from my own personal experience with miscarriage, you know, it's when you, you have that, when you see the purpose of suffering and yeah. when you see God use it for good and open ministry doors that you never would have wanted to walk through, but you wouldn't have volunteered for it, mm-hmm. but then you go through it and you're able to meet other people and come up alongside people, regardless of what you're going through. 
it, there really is, there's that sense of joy and, and thankfulness that even though you've walked through this valley, now you can act as a guide for others who may not think they can make it through. And it's yep. awesome. Yeah. It, it, there's a phrase that I always say that you can't lead someone out of somewhere you've never been. Mm. And so that's where like kind of my, uh, my, my life verse right there became, um, Praise be, it's a second Corinthians one, three through four, praise be to the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others and any trouble um, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. And so that it, it's like uh, w- the point that we're making here is this idea of it reveals what brings you joy. Walking in your gifts is joyful, like writing, speaking, teaching. These are the uh, uh, connecting, ministering. These things bring me joy because it's basically like, um, I don't know. It's, it's that fulfilling the calling that God has on your life. And when I see how this suffering is actually going to make me better at that I experience joy. I can still cry during it. (laughs) It still, it still sucks, but Mm -hmm. I, I experience joy in that knowing the Lord is going to use this just like he used the depression, just like he used Mm -hmm. the cancer, just like he used, I mean, all these other different things in my life. This ministry itself is, was birthed from a really, really difficult season that I had to go to counseling for, for like two years. And I can say that the the ministry would not exist without that season of my life. So mm-hmm. anyway, that is, uh, oh, and the verse that also that uh, comes with that, and this is the verse that went through my head. Um, basically for, for the rest of my, you know, the, the, you know, the 25 years that I did still st- struggle with depression, uh, yeah. Hebrews 12, one through two, therefore, since we are surrounded, surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, <laughs> fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And here's, here's the phrase that I always use for the joy set before him. He endured the cross. Mm. Think about that. For yeah. the joy set before him, he endured the cross. This would be him saying, I know what this suffering is going to produce. And mm-hmm. for that joy, I will go through the cross. So this is basically the same. This is the same thing that every single mother does when she has a baby. She doesn't have, <laughs> she doesn't, she's, she's not sitting there going, oh, I love childbirth. Did you like childbirth, Amy? <laughs> no, it was not magical like the book promised. <laughs> But for the joy set before you, you endured the, you know, however many hours of labor pains uh, and you would go back and do it again. In fact, you did. You did it three times. (laughs) That was Um, from miscounting. Yeah. Yes. So So why is joy and suffering important is, uh, you know, like Amy said, we can accidentally commit communicate a bad worldview. Uh, it helps reveal uh, what actually brings us joy, because if we're not excited about doing ministry, if we're not excited about character, you know, if you can't find joy in that, then that's something to talk to the Lord about. Um, and then finally, if we're not doing it, our kids probably aren't going to be able to do it either. Yeah. Yeah just practical. You know, we want to model it so that our kids model it. And, you know, you're going to have to make adjustments for each kid's personality type. Um, some of my kids, they're, they're more my style to where they look at or my type to where they look at something. Okay. We're going through this. We're going to muscle through. And then I've got one child in particular who is very theatrical. And so, uh, you know, kind of coaching it. They're okay. I, I see where you're at. Let's, how can we deal with this help or in a more healthy way? You know, meet your kids where they're at, help them to get stronger. Don't necessarily try and make them into you yes. um, because I don't, I don't think that'll work. No, um, and none work. of us liked it when our parents tried to do it. So exactly. um, yeah, it's, it's see where your kids are, see where they naturally go and try and help them make healthy, wise, uh, godly choices within their suffering. Yeah. Um, so finally, uh, we've talked about like, what's the purpose of suffering? Secondly, why is it important for us to have joy in suffering? And then finally, of course, the hard one, how do you actually do this? How do you accomplish this? Um, so one of the things that I got from uh, one of the professors that I had at Biola, Clay, Clay Jones, is he was talking about how whatever you do, praise God first. Mm. And so he talks about when he got this news that he had this debilitating, um, I think it was spinal cancer. Uh, oh, wow. I mean, he, he, you know, he got off the phone, his eyes are wide and he, he tells his wife and they both start crying. And the first thing they do is they get on their knees and they praise God. Mm. And that. 
he 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 points back to that moment he said it was in that moment that he knew satan was defeated the fact mm. that oh i just ugh, I still yeah get from that i know i know i got him too i was like oh i got the goosebumps I got yeah the goosies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so whatever happens praise god first you would be it would it would be surprising maybe sometimes listen to our previous podcast on on fostering joy about how yeah. what we do in our actions actually starts to affect our brains um yeah. And so when we actively praise God, even when we don't feel like it, it actually brings feelings of joy. Yeah. One thing I, I do want to post, because I was uh, looking through um, Psalms, because gosh, if you ever want verses about, you know, suffering and everything, go to the Psalms, you know, yeah. they're great. Um, so Psalms 84, starting in five, uh, it, blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca. Now, just to pause for a second, blessed are those who strengthen you. That word blessed, Asher, actually means it's like happy. Again, we got the joyfulness. Those who set their hearts on pilgrimage. That's this perspective that, you know, all things are passing away, that this, mm. this life is dream. Our hope is in heaven. And then it says, who passed through the valley of Baca. Now, the valley of Baca is sort of a metaphorical term for deep sorrow, weeping. Mm -hmm. So as they're pa passing through sort of this valley of, of shadows, you know, as, as you remember also from Psalms, it says they make it a place of spring. So here you have mm -hmm. this valley of sorrows, but because they have their hope in Christ, because they have this joy in God, they're able to pass through this uh, utterly dark valley and turn it it says in verse six they make it into a place of springs where autumn rains also cover it with pools they go with strength to strength till each appears before god in zion uh, and so it's just this important thing of walking through this valley that because their hope is on god that they're able to pass through and even in the darkest moments they were able to have springs and growth uh, so yeah i just think of clay jones which aside if you've ever if you're ever wanting a really great book on uh the problem of evil he wrote yes. a great one look it up it's awesome you should read yep it. it's called uh why god allows evil it is it is probably one of the it was it was that the I, I heard it in lecture form first i think he came mm -hmm. to a church near us that was the one that finally solved the problem of evil for me i'm like okay this makes sense um so, uh, so how do, so how do we have joy within suffering? Whatever happens, praise God first. Um, teaching healthy grieving uh, tactics. Um, so I think you put that one, Amy. Did you put yeah, that? Or so, did I? Right. Yeah. So again, this this plays into okay. How do we react healthily? It's it's fine. We're not saying that you should just be smiling and just be oh the world is crashing down and you're like that little dog when the room's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> like, everything's fine. We're not saying that. But there is, there is a balance when it comes to grieving. You know, there, we do have this time and it says there's time and purpose for everything. So there's a time to grieve. There's a time to weep. It's important for our kids to understand that it's okay to be upset, angry, yeah. frustrated, doubting, questioning. All of that is okay. Yeah. But then again, there's that line to where then it crosses into the unhealthy mm -hmm. to where now you're starting to just um, either wallow in things or you, you feel... Uh, like you, you suffered with depression where you, you probably knew when it was getting a little out of hand, you're not eating, you're not sleeping, um, yeah. where maybe you're reacting very volatilely with anger, uh, you know, throwing things with kids. Hey, that happens quite, that can happen quite often. Um, I, you know, I was always too rational for that. I'd pick something up the throw and I'm like, I'm going to want that later. <laughs> and even in my worst rages, I was just like, I'd have to find something that I knew I didn't care about that. Ah! But yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. but so, yeah, that I would just say is, is uh, you know, allow these times for, for growth and sadness and that sort of thing to happen, but also to be aware that, okay, we have to make sure that we keep things in perspective and to what things are actually going to be healthy for us and which ones are not, whether it's um, mm -hmm. consuming certain things to excess or, you know, just wallowing in it, not getting out and moving, you know, so it's, yeah. it's helpful to understand those. Yeah. A pick me up can quickly become an addiction. <laughs> yeah. You do have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So, um, but third, always look back. So I think there is on the people who don't know how to look back on what the Lord has done are the ones that don't know how to have joy in suffering. Um, there was a sign that a friend of mine gave me that I love. It says, don't look back. You're not going that way. And I was like, eh, you know, I'm the one who, if you ever give me something that's like a feel good message, I'll probably find something wrong with it. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, technically you really should be looking back because that's how you see where you've been, uh, like where you came from. So I, I find that one of the, the most helpful things is keeping a prayer journal. Mm -hmm. um, so when you keep a prayer journal, and then you go back and you reread what you've been praying for, all of a sudden you can say, oh, that's what God was doing. Um, 
So I don't know if uh, I had I had the whole mama bear team take the strength finders test to see like, you know, what our different strengths were. I don't know where this one came up on yours, but context was one of my top five. And it's this I want to say that was one of mine, too. Yeah. It's this idea that you can understand what preceded something. So being Mm -hmm. able to look to see like, like, you know, I was able to make that connection between the depression and being able to serve the girl because I was like, oh, okay, that's why this is important. So when I go into other situations and it's a really difficult situation, I start one of the ways that I actually try to get myself to have joy in that situation is I start using my imagination and thinking about oh, what if I go through this and then God uses it to do this, which then leads to this, which then leads to this, this, which then leads to this awesome thing. And so I start just imagining all the ways that God could possibly be using. And this, I think, would actually be a good game to play with your kids. I mean, you don't want to, of course, jump into it immediately. You want to validate the feelings of of hurt or whatever. But if you can bring them about, if it's something, one of those big things that doesn't go away in 20 minutes, you know, like a spat with a friend or something. Yeah. um, if it, it's something big, you know, maybe, it, you know, your husband loses his job and y'all are out of, you know, out of work. And what if you had to move out of your house? Let's imagine, let, let's, let's picture this, you know, several steps in the future. What good could God bring out of this? And then just start, yeah, just start making, you know, oh, he could do this. He could do this. It's like, find ways. Um, so looking back, but then once you have looked back, it makes it easy to project forward um, that what you've looked back in the past. And so that's how, uh, I think sometimes it's harder for our, our our kids to have this joy because they don't have that rich history of God coming through and then turning, you know, beauty to ashes. All they see is the ashes. They're only old enough to have ashes. <laughs> they haven't gotten to the point where they see the beauty come from that. So, and I think that's interesting that you bring that up because we've actually used that as a teaching topic to where we've used examples from our life and struggles that we've gone through maybe in our teen years to tell our kids who are just now, they're at the upper elementary school, we're starting to get into middle school, you know, so they're they're being able to understand the context and see the big picture to where we're able to use stories from our past mm-hmm. as, as teaching models and saying, okay, well this, you know, here we went through this awful thing and here is how we saw God's faithfulness throughout yeah. it. And it's, uh, and that's really helpful helpful to kids because like you said, they may not be going through this right now, or they may only be at the beginning part to where mm-hmm. if you're able to give them a story, which stories are great for kids, if you're yeah. able to give them a story of how God has been faithful to you, um, that really sticks with them. And we've had thing, we've had stories that we've shared with the kids that even a couple years later, they'd be like, oh, wow. Hey mom, you remember when you told me this oh. and they, it, it gets tucked in there and they can recognize God's faithfulness through your own brokenness and trials and sufferings that you've gone through. And that's a huge testimony to your kids. Oh, so. I can imagine when they came up and you're like, we're awesome as parents. Yeah, we're not failing. And then the school calls and yeah. then it's all back to perspective. Yeah. So finally, I think our last thing for, for the, how to have joy in suffering is remembering that this is not our home. And in fact, we're going to have an entire podcast based on this, that if we think that this life, like I always bring it back to that stupid book by Joel Osteen. Um, was it your best, <laughs> Wait, life, your best now? life now? <laughs> your best life now. No, if your best life is now, you're not a Christian. I'm sorry. <laughs> our best life is promised in the future. So, I mean, I really hope this isn't our best life now. Um, mm-hmm. But the fact that this is not our ultimate home, uh, being heavily minded. So Hebrews 13, 14 through 15 Yeah. Uh, For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Mm -hmm. Um, And so being able to have also a robust imagination of what eternity is going to be like is one of those things that I use that to comfort myself sometimes when, when things just are not going that well here that I just start again, I use that godly imagination to imagine what that eternity is going to be like. And remembering that as my mom has told me since I was young, this too shall pass. That was like the phrase that she always said, this too shall pass. And as I got over, I added to that, it might pass like a kidney stone, (laughs) but it will pass. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love that. (laughs) So, you know, sometimes it's like, it'll pass, but it's not going to be fun. So yeah. um, Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hurrah. So I'll just do a quick recap of what we talked about. So we're talking about joy and suffering, how uh, suffering's not always becomes a sin. Sometimes it is, but uh, we shouldn't jump there. Uh, the purpose of suffering is for us to develop, develop perseverance. Uh, it's for God to sometimes bring about a good that we can't yet see. 
And then sometimes suffering, you know, is just natural consequences of living in a fallen world, either stuff that we have kind of done to ourselves, like, you know, maybe not exercising and then I get a bad injury, <laughs> which has happened when, yeah, anyways, I won't go into that. Um, <laughs> why having joy is important because we can communicate a bad worldview to our kids. Um, it, it reveals what brings us joy if we're not having joy in the joy set before us. If there's something else that if we're trying to take joy in the here and now, then that's a problem. Um, and if we're not doing it, then we're, our kids can't do it because they, mm. they have a hard time doing what we can't model to them. So how to do it would be uh, whatever happens, praise God first. Uh, always start with healthy grieving tactics. Um, always look back. And when you look back to see what God has done, then you can project stuff into the future to see how he's going to work it for your good in the future. Uh, and then remembering that this is not our ultimate home. And that, Mama Bears, is your handy dandy guide on how to have joy in suffering. <laughs> Hoorah. Hoorah. Yeah. So, Amy, would you like to pray us out? Yes, absolutely. <sighs> Lord, we are so thankful that your faithfulness is not contingent on any circumstances. It is just a part of who you are. We are so thankful that you are with us when we are at the best moments of our life. And we are thankful that you are with us in our lowest moments. And it's, it's just your faithfulness overwhelms us. We pray, Lord, for these mamas and papa bears. We know that there are some out there right now who are going through trials that we can't even imagine. And we pray, Lord, that you will help them feel your presence. We pray that you will give them opportunities to have people minister and pour into them as well as to give them opportunities to minister and to pour into others. I pray that they will put you first in all of this, that they will worship and praise you and understand that ultimately we will all be with you one day. And I pray that you will help their children to be able to listen to the wisdom coming from their parents, that they will see God in it and that you will give their children opportunities to be able to put this into practice as well in their daily lives. We thank you, Lord, once again, for your love, your care, your provision. We thank you, Lord, that you are ultimately in control. It's not anyone in government. It's not any one person on this planet. It is you, Lord. And we're so grateful in that because you never fail. In your holy name, amen. Amen. And just closing out with one more thing in the words of Job, this is one of the things that I clung to when I was uh, when I was going through cancer. Shall we not? Shall we accept good from the Lord and not evil? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen.